In order to live off of a very low budget, you need to be able to find joy. Hi, my name is Shang. I'm a personal finance educator and social media influencer at Save My Sense, and I lowered my expenses enough that I was able to become work optional by age 31. I did this living in the heart of Manhattan, one of the most expensive cities in the world. And just to give you guys some real numbers, my grocery budget was $140 a month for myself. My eating out budget averaged out to $100 a month for myself. My clothing budget was on average about $50 a month just for myself. And when I say for myself, well, at that time, I already was married to my husband. And so we did share all of our expenses and everything was pulled together. But when you take out the numbers, average it across the 12 months and divide it by two, these are the real numbers that I'm sharing with you. And the time frame is between 2013 to 2016. Those were our most extreme frugal years. A few years ago, a couple of media outlets got wind that I reached early retirement at age 31 and they wanted to interview me and talk about my frugality. The first media outlet was actually New York Post. For those of you who don't know the New York Post, it's kind of a hybrid between a gossip newspaper and some real journalism. And I don't mean to you know, disparage anybody who works for the New York Post. They do do some really important uh, reporting, but let's just say it's not the most well-researched and they definitely have an angle when they go in that they don't tell you about when they interview you. And so they talked to me about frugality and the entire time I was talking about the joy of frugality and how my husband and I did it. And you know what they called me and a couple of the other people that were interviewed for the article? We were the frugal cheapskates. And that was the title of the article and I was a little mortified when it first came out. I think frugality has a really negative connotation in the United States because when people think someone is frugal, they think of somebody who doesn't spend a lot of money. And that is typically equated to being cheap. What does cheap evoke? Well, people think about someone who maybe buys low quality items from that are made in China and sold in Walmart that are going to fall apart after a few uses. Or maybe cheap means that you're not generous and you don't spend on your friends and give them nice gifts. And I like to argue that my husband and I were not cheap when we were frugal. In fact, so we made a pact when we got married that we would live off the lower of our two incomes. And so that meant that uh, if you take away the taxes that we paid living and working in New York, our expenses during those extreme frugal years equal to about 20% of our gross income, our combined income together, 20% of the two of our incomes together. And we also tithed 10% of our gross income. Tithing is a Christian concept in which you give the first 10%, the first one-tenth of everything that you earn towards uh, charity or towards supporting religious causes and things like that. So I would like to argue that by giving away that first 10%, we were being quite generous relative to how we were spending because the amount we were giving away is basically half of how much we were spending for the whole entire year. But obviously the journalists for the New York Post didn't really know that when they interviewed us. They just focused on the fact that we got things really low cost. Um, I talked about how a lot of our furniture was sourced through buy nothing project, buy nothing groups, they're fantastic, how I got my kids' toys for free, how I buy used clothing, typically on Poshmark or on eBay, and how I cooked a lot of our meals, etc., etc. I really want to address the topic of whether money brings you happiness or not. I do think money brings you happiness. The sign says it, that when you have more disposable income, it buys you conveniences, it buys you nice things, it buys you vacations, it buys you time when you outsource some of your tasks. And that is valuable. And when people experience it for the first time, when I experienced my very first Michelin starred restaurant meal, it was mind blowing. It was just delicious, like nothing I'd ever had. And it was amazing. 
I had a good time. And so I am totally not, um, I, I completely agree that when you have money, it buys you nice things and that does make life easy. It takes away stress. But you know what? That effect, it diminishes over time. So in analytic terms, I like to call it is the rule of diminishing returns. The more you try to spend money on things that you think are going to make happy, the less incremental amount of happiness you actually derive from these experiences. How the heck does that happen? There's a scientific term called hedonic adaptation. What it says is after you experience a very happy event, so it could be winning the lottery, getting a promotion, um, getting your debt paid off, you get an emotional high, you become really happy. But right after that event, our emotions come down to a steady level where we were before the steady state. And so when you spend money on something that makes you joyful, you experience that pop of happiness, but then your happiness comes back down. And so to sustain that high, you have to spend even more on the next one. And that is how people inflate their lifestyles. They begin to think, gosh, my next vacation needs to be bigger, better. I need to try an even cooler restaurant or my clothing needs to look even nicer in order for me to get to that old high that I was feeling. And it becomes a chase. It's like a drug. And that's how, despite the fact that we have people earning, you know, five figures all the way to millions living in New York City, the average New Yorker, if you come across them, pretty much has the same kind of brash attitude, they're kind of abrasive and they're impatient and they're always pushing past people. I rarely meet a chill New Yorker and that was definitely the case when I lived in Manhattan. That, my friends, is the rat race. When we constantly were just running, running, running on a hamster wheel, trying to chase the next best thing, trying to show off on social media, trying to be able to post something really insightful or something worth celebrating on LinkedIn when it comes to our career or something else. We're always chasing something that we think society values, external values, whether it is related to your career, your family, your personal accomplishments, your money. And when it comes to extreme frugalism to reach early retirement, the math doesn't lie. You cannot significantly inflate your lifestyle once you decide to become work optional, which is what I achieved at age 31. I realized, hey, I got this net worth and I can live off of 4% of this net worth for the rest of my life and not have my money run out. But that's 4%. It's not 4%, 5%, 6%. It's 4%. That's the classic definition of financial independence, retire early. And when I realized that, I also realized if I always base my joy, my happiness on what other people think makes you happy, then I probably will never feel like I have enough. And that's tiring. It's tiring to feel like that. You don't want to always be chasing because they always keep working. And the whole point of becoming work optional is to no, no longer chase those highs. So when I was paring back my expenses because I was the spender in the marriage, I realized that I had to completely redefine what joy meant to me. And if I can derive that joy in its purest form and say, I'm joyful today, I'm happy, even though I didn't necessarily buy the most expensive thing or partake in the most expensive experience, then I've unlocked the key to being frugal for the rest of my life. So what does this look like in practicality? I often talk about food because I'm a foodie, I love good food, and New York City is one of the best cities in the world to experience delicious food. And I realized that to sustain the hobby of being a foodie means you're spending more than $10,000 a year on food, and my budget was $100 a month. I mean, that's $1,200 a year. That can't get you a lot of nice food. And so I dug deeper and I was like, what is it that I actually really, really care about? What was I seeking when I went out to those restaurants? Two things. One, I was lonely and I associated eating out with companionship because typically when a friend reaches out to hang out, it's like, hey, let's go out and eat. It's just by default, that's what everybody assumes. But I was like, wait, we don't have to go out and eat to hang out. 
The second revelation was, yes, I do like nice food. I do have a picky palate. But you know what? I don't need to have mind-blowing nice food every day. And if I learn to cook, I can at least try to make my own food that I eat at home, delicious, healthy, nourishing, and meet that need and be okay with it. And so I started looking at different parts of my life where I could apply that same thinking. For uh, clothing that I wore to my corporate jobs, I realized I did not need to have the latest and greatest in fashion. I just needed to look professional. Who cares what label it came from? It just needs to fit and look conservative and presentable and allow me to have executive presence. And nobody will ever know that I bought it used. So I told myself every day, hashtag find joy. Sean, you're going to find joy in all the simple things, in everyday occurrences, because you never know what you see as something very ordinary could be something really extraordinary to somebody else. And that thinking was passed to me by my parents who grew up pretty much starving uh, during most of their childhood in China when things were really bad with the Communist Party. And so I was like, you know what? I'm going to, I'm going to be grateful for everything. The sun rise. Yes, that brings me joy. Or hey, I get to walk and I have the legs to walk. That's privilege because there are people who cannot walk. And you know what? It's really hard to get around New York if you cannot walk. I get to have a full meal every day, uh, full three meals every day to stay nourished. I get to be employed because I know how hard it is to be unemployed as well. And I get to be married to someone I really love. And so every day I started saying these phrases and I didn't necessarily say I get to at the time, I developed that mantra or I've seen it floating around. I didn't invent the I get to mantra, but I started teaching that to other people later on. But it is every day just saying, wow, every day is a gift. Everything that you do is a gift. And a simple life can be very joyful, but you have to be the one to recognize the joy in that simple life and generate it. And I use the phrase, I get to, to do that. Well, now I live in Southern California. My cost only went down through daycare. Um, that's the only place I'm really saving money, but I have increased costs relating to a car and uh, we are eating a little bit nicer because well, we have a little bit more disposable income now that we don't really need to worry about retirement. But those, uh, those foundational phrases still ring true today. When I get to look at, wow, I have air conditioning in the hot summer, that's prevalent. When uh, my sons are safe and healthy, I'm thankful for that. And if you can generate that joy, in the list listings, without ever inflating your lifestyle for the rest of your life, that's when you've got it made. That's when you actually find the true wealth that is in living. And so I pass this on to you as a person who is wealthy by societal measures. I am a multimillionaire, but also as somebody who found that same joy when I didn't have a million dollars. And I hope that you can use this and use it to find joy in your own lives. Save yourself some money, take that money, invest it, and provide more security in your future. Hey, I'm so glad that you watched this video. Don't forget to like, subscribe to my channel. You can also find me on Instagram at Save My Sense. I'm here as your personal multimillionaire teaching you how to live life frugally, find joy, and invest your way to grow your wealth.